Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode, we are going to be dealing with Drez, and I've had a lot of trouble with Drez. Drez has not been kind to me, and our margins are not that great right now in terms of some of these missions. I think uh, the Drez CRT in particular has very tight margins. So we're going to have to deal with some issues, I'm sure, and I don't quite remember what the Drez rover was about. Uh, it's been a while since I launched these missions, and I, I know what a Drez CRT is, what the Rocky 3 does, and what the Drez Oasis does. The Drez ro rover I don't remember, and we don't have any contracts for Drez. This is purely on the EDB's own whim to explore Drez like this. Uh, so we, we'll have to be careful about how we, how we use those resources. Now, after we get the Drez stuff situated, we also have to resupply Lunar Station 1. And we have to build a bunch of stuff to send over to Duna. We do have assets around Duna, and we need to at least resupply them. If not, give them more resources to do more stuff. I think we have some Duna contracts remaining. Um, no, I think we failed. We must have failed one of the visual survey contracts. We do have a plant of Flygon Duna contract available, and that uh, has a seven year duration. Let's pick that up. Uh, I'll just pick that up right now because that should be something we do. Okay. Okay, so here is Dres CRT with Genemini Kerman, and in 30 days it will arrive at Dres. That is the SOI change thing. Now, um, Kerbal isn't entirely sure about that fact. I, it, we could have a Dres periapsis of 154 kilometers. We could be doing that sort of thing. Um, we have 1,823 meters per second in which with which to get into orbit, which is pretty tight, and this is probably the trickiest one. But uh, yep, yeah, let's let's go for it. Uh, if the 154 kilometer periapsis is correct, that is the best we can do anyway. Fortunately, I don't think life support is too bad off here. Yeah, 690 odd days for one crew, so that's good. Lunar Station 1's got 54 days, we're going to attempt to resupply in 42 days. Okay, uh, approaching the SOI change here. Okay, here we go, and as usual we can't really see Drez very well. Um, let's just retrograde at periapsis. Okay. Seems like it's a hundred thousand uh, five hundred and sixty-eight minimum. Okay, there's Drez. Let's see how much time this is gonna take. Uh, four minutes and forty seconds to five minutes. That's a good time to start burning then. Genemini looks to be in a good situation, but we'll have to be careful. Not a lot of juice to make transfers with. Some monopropellant, so that's good. Okay, getting close to completion now. Still pretty high, pretty far away from our periapsis actually. I must have placed a node in a bad position. Yeah, um... Let me shut off and uh, move the node. Uh, let, let me change that and add a new node here. I don't want to be in too weird an orbit. Okay, maybe... Okay, there we go. Alright, something like that should do. 655 is not too high. And it'll give us a chance to phase with what other vehicles we might need to. We're at a 9.9 .9 degree inclination, which is also not bad. If we can get the others into a relatively equatorial position too, That'll save some trouble in terms of uh, making sure that this can get to them. And also when we land stuff on the surface, it'll be easier to reach orbiting stuff. Well, no, it's not. Uh, orbiting stuff in an inclination is easier to reach, but it's not that hard anyway. This is Drez. 
With Drez, it's the slowing down and getting into orbit part that's the most difficult. After that, I don't think it's gonna be too bad. It's gonna be basically like the moon. Okay, there we have it. We are in orbit. And we're in a good orbit. Okay, 216 meters per second left. And that'll have to do for Gen Genemini, who seems to be quite happy with the situation. Alright, now on to the Rocky 3. Now, the Rocky 3 is a drilling unit for the Oasis. So, uh, purely water drilling going on here. And, uh... I think the Oasis will have to do the scanning, unless I'm mistaken. I don't think there's a scanner on here. So yeah, uh, well let's just time warp. It looks like we're going to finish up this stage and uh, Rocky 3's own juice will have to be used in order to actually get into orbit finally. Okay, here we go. Okay, there's the Drez with Drez CRT around it. And here we are approaching the encounter. Question is, what inclination do we have? 65 is quite a lot. Not bad for this thing's mission because we want to land it and do stuff with it, but yeah, maybe we will leave it in the 65 degree inclination and just land it somewhere, do some drilling, and then worry about the rest. Then again, if we're gonna do some drilling, we might as well do it close to the equator anyway. Unless, you know, there's no water deposit close to the equator. That would be... Okay, uh, 27.3... well, now uh, we can do this now and they'll probably cost less than that. I really just need my periasis to go up a bit and my inclination to go down a bit and that'll be enough. Oh, uh, hold on. There we go. Inclination is a little bit less than I wanted. Okay, that'll do. Alright, let's just hold retrograde. Okay, we'll, we will have to do a staging in the middle of this. Now that we're closer, maybe we can see whether it's... Yeah, it's a little bit off from the periapsis. I'm going to scooch it over there. Okay. Alright, here we go. Ooh, the burn time is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. It's not going to be optimal. Alright, well, I'll uh, return with the result. Okay, we are well past periapsis. I'm trying to keep the periapsis from going down here. So I'm a little bit off from my, my intended tra trajectory. And this stage is about to run out. The next stage is the same kind of engine. But we'll be losing some mass once we dump this off. So this will be left in in Kerbal orbit around the Sun and uh, well, they'll just have to stick around there as a mini asteroid if you will. Okay, set and ignition. Well, thankfully we're not short of Delta V. Oh dear, I remember now. This was me being ridiculously fancy. I even have capacitors on here. Oh wow, and so this this is meant to be, uh, so these are fuel tanks for the rover and it can be refueled using those pipe end points, it's got fuel tanks here and it's got a thruster on the bottom I believe, yeah a little thruster on the bottom, LV-1 there and also a very powerful Rockamax 487S that was thrust limited to 50% Yep, and I believe the fuel on this is sufficient to get it back into orbit, was what I was aiming for. So yeah, it's got plenty of fuel. It's got headlights, very cute. It's got a thermometer there. I, I don't know what's... Uh, yeah, uh, a Kerbal would sit up front here, in the most vulnerable possible position, you know. 
Okay, yeah. And so we are trying to land this using this portion, landing legs and these Rockmax 2477s. Uh, so those are our landing thrusters for Drez. I have no idea whether it has enough thrust weight ratio to land properly on Drez. But that seemed to be the goal here. And this fuel tank was used for landing. This fuel tank is currently used for counterbalance and also, of course, resupplying the rover. Very impressive. This was one of my better design days, assuming it works. But uh, it was launched in a Strider Light, which is pretty good. Okay, so let's bring it in, and uh, we'll get into orbit first. We'll get into a tight orbit, and then we will uh, attempt to land it after we get the Dres Oasis into orbit. We won't uh, do it immediately, but uh, after Dres Oasis gets into orbit, we'll try doing this and getting it to the surface, and maybe that's what we'll conclude with. Okay, we're in a good inclination. We are now in Dres SOI. 11.97 uh, is not bad at all. I wonder if we have a detector on here for stuff. We, were we planning to rove about and detect stuff? No, I don't think so. It's got its work cut out for it with all the other stuff. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, no correction need for inclination. Our periapsis is a bit high. Especially since we're planning on a landing. So let me turn it and uh, push it a little bit closer. Okay, 75 kilometers. Could probably even get lower. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, let's get a little bit lower. That's fine. 49 and... How much will, will it take to slow down? And we'll want to slow down into a tight orbit. Okay, here we go. Let's do a quick test burn to see how long it's going to take. Okay, that wasn't good enough. Uh, okay, it could be like 14 minutes. Hmm. Let me let me go full thrust and see. Oh, okay, no, only five minutes. Okay, that's for the full stage, mind you, and we're not going to be using up this stage. We'll use the stage to slow us down into descent as well. Okay, now we can go for it. Okay, the camera has changed a few times, and let me get rid of that maneuver. We're a little bit far from periapsis. Let me wait until we get there to finish this off. We're already at a very tight orbit, but we can tighten that up even more. Now I hope something I sent over here actually has a detector of some sort. Orbital speed is actually much less than that on the moon. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, 49 by 32 is fine. Okay, we've still got 660 meters per second in this. And that will be good to slow down. Yep, we probably won't use all the fuel. Okay, but let's take care of the Dres Oasis and hope it has a scanner. Well, it's got one of these KA-100 detection arrays, but as some point, somebody pointed out, uh, maybe that doesn't scan for water. Uh, I thought it did. I thought it did, but now it just has carbonite here, and I don't know if it scans for water at all. I thought based on some of our other probes that I got water readings from it, but I might have been wrong about that. Now we also have an altimetry sensor there, but that's not going to help us look for water. And really all this is supposed to look for is water. Hmm, so that's a curious thing. Yep, that might be a problem. Let me quickly jump to some of my other probes and see whether they, this scans for water. I could have sworn it did, but maybe I was wrong. So let me just check that out around the moon in Minmus. Well, here we have Minmus Resource Scanner, so let's see if that what how that's configured. 
I don't know if that is the Minris resource scanner or if we have something else, but there's a carbonite detector around Minmus too, so, hmm. Okay, well, this is a totally different thing. This has got this planetary survey camera. And that seems to do all the other stuff. So yeah, I think I've uh, messed myself up a little bit. I think the carbonite scanner is just its own thing. And uh, we really needed that planetary survey camera. Yeah, probably. Okay, let's go back to the Dres Oasis. Now, this has a very tight Delta V situation. On the other hand, it does have water, and of course its whole purpose is to convert water into fuel. So, it, it actually has more resources than would at first seem. If we take a look at TAC life support, it's actually got 300, sorry, 3,000 days worth of water. And uh, yeah, so no problems there. I think we should start. We've got a carbon extractor here. I don't know if I want. I want the water purifier, certainly. Um, water splitter, I don't need yet. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, we've got about as much delta V as we need. Let's get it into Dres SOI and see what happens. Okay, it's got a 20 degree inclination and a 63 kilometer periapsis. That looks pretty good to me. So I'll keep it there. I mean, as long as the stuff isn't going retrograde, that's probably good enough. Okay, we once again have an orbital plot and it is once again about 1500 meters per second. So I'm gonna have this beast turn towards that node very very slowly okay this is bound to take quite a long time since it's just got two nukes to push around 74 tons uh, let's see how long it's gonna take yeah 15 minutes or so and that's at full power but these are nukes so I'm gonna pull it back just a little bit okay see you after a while Okay, I think we're about to make orbit. I got rid of the maneuver because it was off. We have passed periapsis by a long ways. We're not going to have a whole lot of fuel to spare here. I would have thought that we would be in orbit by now. Not that far away from Drez. Well, let's get some conversion going. Start LFO. Well, that changed the sound of things. Water is depleting. We are getting our uh, delta V. Well, LFO isn't uh, converting fast enough to keep our delta V from going down. Okay, we're, we are. We're getting. Uh, we're turning for some reason. I don't know why we're turning. Okay, we are finally captured and it'll not be a tight orbit obviously. We we're already at 436 kilometers. So we'll have to deal with a loose orbit, come around and then bring it down at periapsis again. Still wants to tend towards one direction. This just started once I started the LFO conversion. I don't know why. Everything should be symmetrical. Well, I guess everything is not symmetrical. One of our engines got depleted of fuel before the other. How does that work? Well, let me move this fuel up into here. It's converting to LFO. Where is that going? It should be going into here or or up here. Oh, it's going into up here. Okay. Well, anyway, now it should be balanced. I want to bring it down to an orbital period of one day. Maybe less. Let's go 12 hours if possible. Okay. 
I'll leave it there. So, uh, yep. 11 hour, 32 minute orbit. Periapsis 69 kilometers or so. Let's refocus on that rover that we want to try and land. Even though we don't have the scanner that we intend to have, let's see about this doing whatever detection it can do. Let's just start it off. Scan sat altitude ideal. Well, at least we'll do carbonite scanning out of all things. And we'll start radar scan. Okay. And unfortunately, no planetary scanner. We'll have to send that up some other time. Uh, next opportunity. Let's schedule that. So, uh, transfer window from Kerbin to Drez. Only 14 days. So, we'll get that started out in 14 days. And we'll send one of those over so that this these guys can do their mission properly. Okay, but let's land the rover uh, since that's more of an exploration thing. And we'll see what we can do with that. Uh, yep, it'll just be to do some exploring on the surface, not necessarily gather resources since it, it isn't really resource gathering at all. Okay, I think I'm just going to bring it down directly. So yeah, probably around here. It'll be a steeper descent than normal, but that'll be fine. I sure hope I figured this out properly. Okay, initial descent burn. Alright, and I'm gonna aim for a uh, landing around here. Okay, now that's 20 kilometers in altitude. Let's try and get this done. I think I should get some surface info up. It's not my normal surface info box. I can get rid of uh, curve alarm clock right now though. Because of the orientation of this thing, I want to kill all the horizontal velocity first. I don't want this to have to kill horizontal velocity. That's very cumbersome. So yeah, that's one thing I'll be doing. So we'll be uh, heading straight down. Okay, horizontal speed went the other way. Let me flip around. Okay, well that's less than 0.1 meters per second. Guess that'll do. Hopefully no wheels be punctured at that rate. Oh boy. Just turning around increased it. We do have RCS to do fine adjustments. I think we're going to dump the big tank now. Okay, let's let it go. And uh, Rock Max 2477s. Alright. I wonder what this stage delta V one meter per second is. That's not right. Okay, yeah, definitely using the RCS to correct this. Don't know if that's the best idea, but it's the idea I've got right now. I, I hope that's why I have the RCS on here to begin with. Don't want to find out later that I was saving it for something else. So, surface 270, pitch 0, roll 0. Okay, let's keep it right there. Oh, I know why it's staged del uh, Delta V1. It's because we're not going in this direction in line with the controller. Fair enough. Also means a suicide burn countdown thing doesn't work. Well, it looks like we have plenty of fuel anyway. And that's a good thing, 
because otherwise the balance would eventually go off and we don't want that to happen. Okay, here we go. 10 meters. And touchdown. Okay, smart ISS off because otherwise it'll fire the RCS too much. Okay, we've landed it. Looks good. Let's decouple the rover. Okay, its fairing is off. And let's see. Okay, it doesn't have too much grip. You'd think with all that stuff it'd be a little bit heavier, but it's not. Okay, those are spinning a little bit wildly. Maybe SAS, maybe docking. People like to say docking is good. Okay, well this this works a little bit better. But yeah, it is having a little bit of trouble getting some traction here. Turning does not seem to be happening very easily. This could have done with some RCS ports. It has some monopropellant. Does it have RCS at all? I wonder if this little module comes with RCS, that sort of thing. No. Does not seem to. Probably shouldn't have RCS on it at all. But then again, it's weighing it down, which is its best chance for some grip. But turning doesn't seem to be happening. No, wheels are turned correctly, but it's not actually changing. Uh oh. What just. What just exploded? Um. Hey, little guy. Uh, let's go back into staging mode. Can you turn now? Oh, okay, so it was only docking mode that was preventing me from turning. Hmm. Anyway, little guy, uh, you need to figure out what's. Okay, but. Okay, so docking mode, better for going straight. <laughs> uh, staging mode, better for turning around. Okay. Hey, you gotta adapt. Uh, let me see what happened with the explosion there. Was that just a little decoupler suddenly exploded? I mean, it wasn't the other stage. The, I mean, the other stage would have crashed a long time ago. Okay, I need to go back into staging to turn. I don't see anything that's... Well, we're, uh, we're, we've are we got some slide slip here. Let's get back into docking so that we can get some traction and move forward. Well, I don't see anything wrong with that little pod, so whoa. So we'll just leave that be. If you want to settle down, you take off SAS. Okay, well those are the rules now. Alright, I'm going to put on the parking brakes until we can decide where to go with it. Uh, it's got It's got a thermometer. Well, uh, Drez's Ridges. We'll send back this science. Uh, it's charging up very slowly. Hopefully this won't take too much. Okay, so 32 science sent and possibility of much more science using this rover. And of course once uh, Kerbal gets here we can have the Kerbal do the EVA and of course the surface sample and that'll be even more. Oh, but given the way it drives around, I have no idea how long it'll take to get from biome to biome on Drez. But hey, it's something. And we got all of our missions into orbit around Drez. We got this successfully down to the surface. 
we did mess up in not having the right type of scanner but uh, at least the missions as deployed have worked out so with that I'll say thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time